Hi, welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you have been warned. So look, look, here I come in three. Look, look, two. Look, look, one. Bye, welcome everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth. Look, greatest show. The multiverse. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We have a great one for you today. A lot earlier than yesterday. I guess technically, I did do the show yesterday, but the, the upload didn't get here until today. Uh, so I felt it. I just felt like, let's just get this show over with this time. <laughs> All right, so listen, we have a great show for you today. So first we've got Chain Link to the rescue. <laughs> they took a few days off and they're back. And Chain Link is going to power NFT non-fungible token blockchain games. Um... Shit, I didn't write down the name of the company. Anyway, we'll read it while we soon we get there. And then, bang! Bank of America is treating Ethereum and Bitcoin like cash. Oh, yeah. And it's in their user agreements, in your account holder agreement now. Oh, yeah. So we're going to read about that. And then, bang! New investment vehicle, 21 shares, uh, launches Bitcoin ETP on Bourse, etc. So that is, uh, you know, a real stock exchange like... Uh, no, like the NASDAQ type thing. So, bang, then we're going to do the shout outs and daily summaries. So, let's proceed how we proceed, brothers. Bah! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got some good stuff today. Yeah. All right. Let's get everything in order here. Let's get everything in order. All right. Bitcoin, $9,289. All right. And when I left you yesterday, the price of Bitcoin was $9,108. So we have gone, what do we go? Up. What's that? We went up $181. All right. Bang. Look, look, top 10. Whoops. Let's get this proper. Top 10. Oh, Crypto.com coin takes over the 10 now. Oh, Cardano went to 9 Look, look, the battle for 9 and 10. Hold on, all right, let's get through when we get there. <laughs> look, look, top 10 of the day, brothers. Most of the usual suspects, brothers. <laughs> top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Litecoin, Binance Coin, Cardano, and Crypto.com Coin. Bye, holding on the number 10. Oh, look at the rising Cardano, 12% up. Oh, lay. Hold on, let me move my head over. I think I'm, there we go, there we go. All right, 12% up, look at that. Bah! All right. Well, market moves of the day. Usual song. Hold on, hold on. <coughs> uh, single digits up to single digits down. Well, obviously, except for the Cardano right there. <laughs> All right, hold on. Uh, bang, 12%, boom! Hope everyone's got their Cardanos. All right, single this up, single this down. Yes. Single this up, single this down. Oh, that's right, because Cardano came out with their new website today. Oh, yeah, they're starting their rebranding today. So the website came out today, and then, um, uh, then they're going to do some other stuff. You know, PricewaterhouseCoopers is uh, going to commercialize Cardano, right? And today was the beginning of the commercialization. They got the brand new website up. All right, anyway, single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down, two. Single digits up, two single digits down. All right. Let's see who lost money today. You see anything on here you like? Go get it because it is on sale. Bah! Oh, not many sales. <clears throat> All right, top 10 losers. Celsius, Compound, Matic Network, Hive, Engine Coin, Maker, Zilliqa, Unised, Leo, Digibyte, and BitShares. Let's see who made money today, brothers and sisters. Bah! Oh, that's some solid gains up in this motherfucker. Look, look. Solid gains up in these parts. 
Uh, top 10 of the day, Synthetics Network, The Midas Touch, Verge, Cardano, Bancor, Nexo, Kyber Network, A, B, Chain, and IOTA. Yes, indeed, indeed. All the big dogs up in there. Well, not all of them, but a few. All right, mark cap of the day. Total mark cap is... Mm -hmm. 264.6 billion dollars uh, when i left yesterday we were at 259 even so we've gone up uh what is that 5.6 billion dollars in 24 hour uh, total uh, sorry in market cap and then 24 hour volume is uh 57.1 billion dollars when i left yesterday we were at 54.3 so uh we've gone uh, up 2.2.8 billion dollars all right just fantastic all right fucking 24 hour volume is still way down there i remember that the uh the crypto you know these crypto sites were or the market like people were saying that a lot of the volume in in these sites were wash trades and everything and i know that uh what was it binance who just bought this thing? Coin market cap, Binance, right? Anyway, whatever. Whoever bought this now, maybe they're taking out the wash trades, and maybe that's what made the all of a sudden uh, cut in twenty-four hour volume uh, that we've been seeing lately. All right, let's move on. Bang! Chainlink oracles to power NFT-based blockchain games on Polyant. Polyant. Yes, Chainlink to the rescue. So. Uh, well, I don't know, there's not much to yap about. Let's just get into it. <laughs> it kind of says it all. It's going to power video games. Let's check it out. Chainlink's technological capabilities are in demand this year. With its blockchain seeing increased adoption this year, courtesy of its scalable smart contracts, oracles, and verifiable randomness function, VRF features. <coughs> NFTs and Chainlink. On June 29th, the firm said Polyant Games... Uh, a venture fund and development lab dedicated solely to non-fungible token-based blockchain games will use, <clears throat> we'll use Chainlink's blockchain to power various features of the broader Polyant Games ecosystem. All right, so they're going to use it to power the ecosystem. Chainlink's VRFs uh, will feature on Polyant's Founders Keys, PGFKs, and upcoming member FF. NFT that will provide lifetime rewards and perks to holders within the Polyant Games ecosystem. <clears throat> uh, VRFs will be used to randomize the distribution of exclusive NFTs and various other rewards for PGFK holders, the release noted. This looks like some diagram of it right here. Um, on choosing Chainlink, Polyant said the project's deep industry expertise made it ideal to as the firm explores capabilities of and works towards bolstering NFTs for mainstream investors and consumers. Polyant's faith is not unplaced. Earlier this month, Chainlink would, was recognized by the World Economic Forum as one of the top 50 tech pioneers in 2020 for the firm's work in blockchain. Oh, excuse me here, let me arrange myself. Smart contracts and decentralization. <laughs> Truly random winnings. I told you about randomness. Randomness in computers is hard to achieve because computers don't do random. They just do exactly what you tell them. All right, so truly random winnings. Well, let me get a sip. So, all right. The release explained... Chainlink's VRFs will power chance-based rewards for users who stack on PGFKs. Based on the amount of NFTs held in their respective wallets. For the uninitiated, VRFs are a truly random way to determine winners. Uh, to, sorry, sorry. To determine rewards among other uses. Uh, as Crypto Slate illustrated last month, imagine a betting service announces the winner of a million dollar lottery. <clears throat> what proof do ticket holders have 
about the winner's connection with the organization. Well, or what if the so-called winner is an employee of the company acting solely as bait to entice new buyers of lottery tickets? VRFs can help in the above example, as the Chainlink blog explains. Well, oh, sorry, well-made systems relying on randomness would ideally want it to be both provably fair, equally uncertain. What? Hold on. Would want it to be both provably fair equally uncertain to all contract participants okay while also successfully reducing the risk that an adversary could exploit their contract by predicting its outcomes chainlink vrf randomness feature features a major advancement in the nft space as it enables a provably fair and on-chain verifiable source of randomness so you know if you can you can prove that it was random so if this company polyant uh you know, you roll your dice or whatever, you'll be able to verify that your dice roll was, you know, truly random. Uh, benefits include proper transparency for the minting and distribution of PGFK rewards, which an eventual goal, with an eventual goal of building an open collaborative ecosystem around NFTs. In the coming weeks, Polyant will explore more use cases, more uses for Chainlink capabilities all centered around the games, the games it supports and native products. Meanwhile, Chainlink's head of business development spoke in this regard. He said, we're excited to empower Polyant Games with secure and reliable Oracle solutions to further their mission of expanding the blockchain gaming ecosystem into numerous unseen application designs that are augmented, augmented by access to off-chain data. Bong! There you go. Chainlink to the rescue. So, Chainlink to the rescue again. Uh, they're going to help out these guys build their non-fungible games. Well, well, not build them, but I guess uh, just be used in them to make sure that everyone knows that they're truly random. Uh, what else? It wasn't just random. Oh, and the non-fungible tokens. What? Anyways, look, man. They're going to help out this company do some blockchain games. So, bang! Great, chain link. <laughs> Let's move on. Bang! Bank of America is treating Bitcoin and Ether as cash. They will let you purchase crypto with credit cards. So, last week, one of the brothers, uh, Pollywood, <clears throat> he uh, he he showed us in, in, on Twitter. He he tweeted us privately. He showed us his mother's uh, his mother's Bank of America thing uh, statement, and yeah, it said cryptocurrency in that on it. And actually, there's a picture of one here. And then I saw, yeah, so. Yeah, so, um, and then one of the other brothers was talking about it. Oh, 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 um, yesterday, Binium showed me, showed it. So I guess we'll see it when we go to the shout outs part. Yeah, yeah, here in America. And so you see, they put it in their, their agreement, you know, the user contract or whatever. What is that? Like the account, you know, the account agreement, you know what I mean? So what's in there and, um, so you see that they're just quietly getting stuff ready. I mean, they know that people are going to be starting to use Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're both regulated here in America, both as um, as commodities. And so, um, yeah, they're not stupid. They know what's coming. I mean, they, they can hear the, they see the same hearings on cryptocurrencies and stuff as we do, uh, you know, in Congress. You know, they're not stupid, obviously, that. And so uh, they know what's coming. And so yeah, they're just setting the groundwork. So it just is a smooth rollout of everything. And so we have a sip and then we shall proceed. Yeah. Yep. I mean, and don't get, don't make no mistake. It's not that Bank of America likes Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's just that they're going to make money off of it. <laughs> okay. It's not, uh, it's not like an endorsement or something. You know, if you want to use Bitcoin and Ethereum, well, they'll be more than happy to collect the fees for you doing so. All right. So first, they ignore you. Then they fight you. Then you win. All right. The adage cannot hold truer when it comes to the cryptocurrency markets. This year alone, banks like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and even the, People's, even the People's Bank of China 
all anti-crypto at some point have expressed their interest in offering cryptocurrency services to clients. While their reasons may range from collecting higher processing fees, of course, instead of embracing the decentralized ethos of Bitcoin, the, development mark a cha- the developments mark a changing narrative <clears throat> in the digital asset space as far as traditional markets are concerned. Now, another American banking giant seems ready to plunge headfirst into, crypt- into the crypto market. Purchase Bitcoin with Bank of <clears throat> B of A Bank of America credit cards. An image posted by a user on the R cryptocurrency subreddit showed a Bank of America notice stating all cryptocurrency purchases will be treated as a cash equivalent. So here's an actual Bank of America thing. So this is the same thing that um, Poppy would showed us. Pollywood DJ Pollywood showed us. Bang bang bang, and you can see it says we're changing some of the terms, and down here it says. The section titled Types of Transaction has been revised to clarify that cryptocurrency is considered a cash equivalent, treated as a cash advance. And so, uh, yeah, they're treating it as a cash advance so they can make that money, right? Because cash advances are more expensive. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Anyways, this applies to all Bank of America credit card purchases of digital currencies with no confirmation on how the bank treats debit cards or bank transfers for crypto transactions. All right, so this is their credit card product. I am assuming, so this doesn't look like it applies to their debit cards yet or uh, bank transfers. So as the image shows, <clears throat> terms and condition under the types of transactions have changed to include cryptocurrencies as a cash equivalent. That in turn will be treated as a cash advance on purchases. So that's the kicker. That's the, the secret. Uh, thread commentators noted that cash advantages attract the higher fees for Bank of America. About 5% on all transfers or a minimum of $10 is noted by WalletHub. So they, they, they use, they, they're saying they're, they're describing big uh, crypto stuff as a cash advance so that they can ca- they can get the cash advance fees, right? Five bucks, 10 bucks or 5% or a minimum of 10 bucks per transaction, right? Believe me, it's not. It's nothing to do with that. They think that Bitcoin or anything is good or bad. It's just there's enough people out there we can make money off it. Let's go for it. Uh lack of volatility leading to the decision. This is a stupid. I'm not even going to read this. That's just stupid. So the move marks a step forward in some regards. <clears throat> While the ethos of cryptocurrencies calls for cutting out middlemen and high fees. Banks onboarding customers with the latter is perhaps better than the threat of card cancellations or account freezing. Despite the development, one must be wary to trade cryptocurrencies on credit. They remain a highly speculative, risky investment with a marked lack of risk management tools on most platforms. Anyways, bang! Here it is. So, here it is. Right? They're going to... Um, they're going to let you start buying it, buying crypto with your credit card, your Bank of America credit card. Uh, they're going to treat it as a cash advance. So you're going to have to pay that cash advance fee. Uh, but there it is. Like they, you know, that's the reality of it. The reality of it, this is coming. And now the banksters are, you know, making moves to quickly capture the market, right? You want to capture the market. Um, so, yeah, it's not stupid if it, if if crypto fanatics, you know, uh, enthusiasts, whatever you want to call them, um, hear that, hey, I could buy my crypto with a Bank of America credit card. Well, maybe they apply for a Bank of America credit card, so Bank of America makes more money. And so, uh, smart business for Bank of America and uh, all just good for crypto fans and crypto folk. All right. Bye. And then finally, 21 shares. Bitcoin ETP gets listed on Deutsche Bourses, etc. Coinbase selected as the digital custodian asset as the digital asset custodian. Bye. So this is a twofer. This story is a twofer. All right. So 21 shares. That's that company called Amon. So you guys who were here last year, remember we kept reading about that company from Switzerland that kept coming out with all those ET- ETPs? Yeah, that's these guys. They just changed their name to 21 shares. So it's the same company. and uh, But now they're getting listed on Bors, etc. So major deal. That's like getting listed on the NASDAQ, right? Same thing. Uh, pretty much. And uh, 
So an ETP is uh, an ETF, you know, so an ETF here in America, exchange traded fund. Well, over there in Europe, they just call them exchange traded products, but it's the same exact thing, right? A basket of assets that are traded on an exchange, exchange traded fund. All right. So look, let's check it out. Deutsche Bourse has listed a Bitcoin exchange traded product ETP offered by 21 shares. A Swiss-based company focused on financial product services. <laughs> this Bitcoin ETP will debut on the exchange's electronic trading venue, etc. on June 2nd, so tomorrow. In a bid to attract more institutional investors to the 21 shares AUM, assets under management. 21 shares MD, Laurent Xis, noted, the listing on etc., not only, <clears throat> not only strengthens our current position in Germany, but also opens up institutional-grade crypto products to the wider European and international markets. Uh, the Deutsche Board Group, Bourse Group runs two trading venues, which include the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and etc., the market in which the Bitcoin ETPs will be listed. Notably, these two marketplaces make up the third largest trading ecosystem in Europe, after Euronext and the London Stock Exchange. According to market data, Etc. alone facilitates 150 billion pounds worth of derivatives and equity transactions in May. Um, with a regulated, now this is the key, five regulated. So institutions can come and get this. Uh, institutions can come and get this. It is regulated, good to go. With a regulated <clears throat> exposure to Bitcoin, uh, the 21 shares ETPs, might further boost the liquidity capacity of Deutsche Börse. Such services are only rolled out by a handful of crypto entities in Europe. Um, in the US, it is even harder to integrate regulated ETFs based on crypto assets due to the strict approach by the SEC. Well, it's not that it's hard to integrate, it's that we don't have any. The integration isn't the hard part. The SEC needs to dag on Approve one. Approve an ETF. All right. Yeah, but you see, Switzerland is approving them. Germany's, the Germans are letting them put them on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Germany's rocking and rolling. And the Swiss. All right. We get a sip. And then we'll read about Coinbase custody to serve as the digital store. So... That's a pretty big notch in uh, Coinbase's custody there. That they're going to custody a regulated. A regulated investment vehicle. That's that's pretty good. <clears throat> uh, following the listing on Deutsche Börse, 21 shares has selected Coinbase custody as its digital asset storage provider. Coinbase shared this news on a Medium post today. As 21 pre shares prepares for the Bitcoin ETP trading to commence in less than 24 hours. The blog goes on to highlight that 21 shares settled on Coinbase, given their value proposition in line with launching a Bitcoin ETP. Uh, 21 shares, oh, so this is what 21 shares says here. 21 shares selected Coinbase custody. After reviewing our institutional-grade offline storage solution, which includes world-class security, regulatory compliance, and insurance coverage, we are excited to be chosen custodian for the 21 shares Bitcoin ETP, Europe's first physically-backed Bitcoin ETP. Bye! So there we go. That's what we need. Investment vehicles, regulated ones that institutions can come and get. That institutions can come get, and these are physically-backed, meaning... This takes Bitcoins off the market, creating scarcity, and uh, that's just good stuff. Um, all right, I guess that's really about it. All right, bang. All right, let's move on. Look, it's a pretty quick show, isn't this? Fuck, this is over real quick. I feel like I've just been, all I had was a couple smokes. All right, bang. Let's see what we got all around these parts. A bunch of miscreants here. Look, oh, the Senate hearing that I, I, I put. So I hope you guys watched that Senate hearing. I'm not even going to lie. I didn't even watch that shit yet. I was trading all... It, it, uh, you'll see later, but I didn't watch it yet, but I'm going to watch it probably right now, <laughs> right after I'm done this. All right, Rob Ert, Larry Brother, see you, brother. Bong. 
Chief of his own, the BB's own. Posse, Pasquayaki tribe. Love you, Chief C, Chief. V-Chain masters, V-Chain holders, V-Chain killers, V-Chain gang members. Yeah. But what did Bivizo tell me? Oh, he told me that some famous... Oh, he told me that this V is for V-Chain lovers. And he told me that some famous people are watching. I mean, I'm not into, like, you know, the crypto community stuff, so I don't know who's famous. But he told me that that guy who, who likes some of my posts named... Uh, Anyways, I'll show you the guy. He said the guy's famous or something. Anyways, DP Entertainment. So, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Sweetie. Yes. Love you, sweetie. See you, sweetie. Bye. All right, let's get to it. So, yeah, sweetie, actually, I, I said I wasn't really going to trade much. But, daggone. Yeah. Yes. All right, so what happened last night was this. So, as you can see, you know, here it is, the daily. So here's the pulse, swing, pulse, swing, pulse, swing, pulse, swing. And so I want to catch a dag on pulse. And so I did take it up. Um, I got in. So as you can see, it also bounced off the SMAs here. So here's like a pulse, a swing, and sort of a, that's a cheesy one. That's a cheesy one. But I got in down here. You can see it's right there. So it's not making fuck all. But I'm just going to hold on, hold on to this for the week. Because I want it to go, that's price target. So it's either going to reach price target or stop me out. Um, then I did another one, NZD USD, and this was the same deal. We're right here. You can see uh, we went, uh, pullback. Here's the SMAs. You can see we retraced. Uh, you can see that price is beginning to move out. So there's price target one. Here's price target two. Um, so that's why I took it. Like I said, I'm, you know, we're in the summer doldrums. Um, so normally this trade should work. Uh, we'll see how that occurs. <laughs> and then these ones are the juicy ones I was in. I got in down here, uh, right, at, right when we, right when we hit the SMA. So bang. And then I also got in on this one. Bang. Um, sorry, sorry, not this part. I got in on this part, on the retrace, and then I got in right down here. Bang. Uh, so I'm not in on this part of it. And this trade really is... That was just more of a feeling. <laughs> I'm not going to bullshit you. It, it wasn't really... It's just that it curled and then, um, you know, uh, the uh, American numbers were good. The fundamentals were good, and so it looks like the dollar is weakening. And so uh, I know, I know, guys, you're looking at my charts. You're like, yo, you got the Fibonacci's. Hold on, let me, let me, I don't want to confuse you. Anyways, but um, so I did get into four, so I'm into that. And so that's what I'm in. Uh, these ones because they're off the daily. Um, and these two, the British pound ones, because um, uh, the numbers were good out of America. And so it looks like. We are getting to be a little bit, um, uh, a little more risk on, if you want to call it that. All right, so that's it, that's it. Um, but I'm pretty, I'm just gonna hold on to this shit. I'm probably not gonna. I mean, we'll see what happens during the week. But I'm probably not gonna really be. Like I said, it's summertime, and so summertime, you're not really supposed to trade so much. But these ones are so obvious. You know, I, was, I had to get that loot. So back. All right. Bang. All right, let's get back to crypto. All right. Get back to crypto. What we got here? So there's Sweetie. Bang. Charlie Shin. <laughs> yes, brother. Bang. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Black Mama. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Bam. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. All right. And then, what else we got? Oh, new subscriber. Nice. What we got here? Akinde Uluwasei Joseph. All right, brother. Akinde, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Welcome, welcome. Ricardo Tuto, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Edwin, one of the originals. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Yes. Our man Russian's running special ops for us in Manhattan. Oh, yeah. He's right in the belly of the beast. Oh, yeah. Well, when he goes to work. <laughs> he lives in New Jersey. 
when he works, he goes right into the belly. Oh, yeah. We send him undercover. That's how he does it. Look, look. Bye. Later, brother. <laughs> All right. Oh, I see this son of a bitch right here. Look at this son of a bitch right here. Look, look. Bye. Look, look. Bye. Look, look. Bye. Yeah. Got you, wrong cast. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Let me out here. L Downs. Love brother. See you, brother. Bye. Well, if it is a brother, I can only see a, a mouth right there. Anyway, look. Walter Sobchak. Oh, yeah, the guy with the big old gun. <laughs> Love brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, it's a nice piece right there. All right, here's Binium. What's Binium talking about? Binium said, look, look, see me news. All right, Binium, what am I looking at? <clears throat> see me news. The Swiss government is making key legislative changes to financial laws to improve legal conditions for blockchain businesses. Well, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, the story we just read right now, 21 shares, this is a Swiss company. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Swiss are up to, you know how they are with their money. They're all about that money. When I was a kid, there used to be a thing called a Swiss bank account. Yeah, you could just hide your money. Yeah, yeah dictators and that would just straight up hide money over there. You're not allowed to anymore, but... Yeah. You know the movie... Uh, what's the movie? Um, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, when he goes to Switzerland to hide the money. Yeah, that, that's how it used to be. I yeah, used to be able to straight up just hide your loot. And if your government came and asked about, about you, it was against the law for the banks to tell your government that you even had a bank account. <laughs> so people would just evade taxes in Switzerland, but they're not allowed to do that anymore. But yeah, Swiss bank accounts. The, the Swiss bank accounts used to be numbered. They didn't even have your name on them, right? So if a government came and was like, hi, yeah, we think Shamari's got a bank account here. Tell us what he's got. They'd be like, well, our accounts don't go by the name Shamari. They go by a number. You got a number to an account? You know, of course, the government doesn't know what account or else they'd already know what was in it, right? So they'd be like, all right, well, sorry. <laughs> Can't help you, motherfuckers. Fuck off. Get out of here. Scram. Beat it. <clears throat> all right. Thank you, Binium. All right, Daryl Duran. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Binium, what's Binium talking about here? Binium says, look, look. Zimbabwe government suspended all mobile apps money payments. <clears throat> yeah, well. Yeah, you fuck stick, so you better think about that, huh? You little fucking decentralized digital money loving motherfuckers. Yeah, well, what happens if, if your government just turns off your shit? Oh yeah. There you go. There you go. How you like them apples, motherfucker? All you people who want all this digital, digital, digital crap. Yeah, fiat sucks, fiat sucks. Yeah? Well I can still spend fiat during a blackout, can I? <laughs> if a hurricane comes and wipes this place out a little bit. And that we have no electricity for a week. Well, I could still buy uh, stuff, can't I? So uh, you better think long and hard, digital lovers. You better think long and hard. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm going to be free from the bank. Yeah? Well, the bank ain't turning off your fucking payments, are they? Well, not in America, I mean. <laughs> not, not in your country if you're listening to me in an English-speaking country. But oh yeah, you think real long and hard how much you want this digital thing to be. How 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 deep you want it to go. You're scared of a bank closing your account? All right, well, what if your country's all digital? All right, imagine America. Bang, we go full digital. Like, there's no such thing as a greenback anymore. Imagine that. That'll never happen, believe me. These rednecks here will kill motherfuckers before they'll let you take their greenback. Fuck, they'll kill you if you just try to take their guns. Never mind. If you try to take their money, that'll never happen here in America. But just imagine it did. Imagine there was no cash in America anymore. Not a penny. Okay. Well, if you wanted to really fuck with America, well, you don't have to invade America anymore, do you? Yeah, if you're the Chinese, the Chinese, the Iranians, and the Russians could all get together as a coalition and just hack us real quick. Yeah. Knock out our electric systems. 
No one's buying or selling anything now, are they, motherfucker? Oh, yeah. You ever thought about that? <laughs> yeah. It, that would make it... Look, America, you can never invade America with the military. We will blow your bitch ass up if you think of coming here, right? America's an island. So to get here, you've got to, you know, take boats and bring bring all those troops and everything across the ocean. Yeah, well, obviously, we're going to fucking see you coming. <laughs> obviously, we're going to see you coming, aren't we? Yeah, well, you think we're going to let you land on the shore? No, we're just going to nuke you right in the middle of the ocean. And so that's the problem with Russia and China that they know they can't get here. Right. We can get over there. Sure. We could we could put we could put troops in Germany and just drive to Russia. Right. We could put we have troops in South Korea yeah, and just fly right over there and bomb some shit in China. Yeah, China can't do that to us. Russia can't do that to us, right? The Iranians, yeah, we have troops right there in Iraq. If we feel like it, we could just bomb the shit out of the Iranian nuclear facilities, couldn't we, anytime we felt like it? And so we have total superiority in that regard. Yeah, well, if we go fully digital, you kind of give away that in that they could just shut down our whole electrics grids. All right, then no American can buy or sell anything, right? Think about that. Think about that. So you guys better think real hard and long about how much you love this digital money shit uh, and, the, and, and and getting rid of your fiat because uh, <laughs> plus they're going to know everything you buy, all that stuff. Try buying a, you know, you can you you can fuck you can forget about buying that quarter ounce of weed off that homeboy down the block now. <laughs> Shit, that's really the one. That's the root. That's the worst one of getting rid of the money. Can't buy that dag on weed, boy. Need that gorilla glue, son. Look, look. All right, though. So think about it. All right, let, I'm yapping. I'm sorry. Let's go on. Oh, and so here's Binium. Binium Bank of America has changed some terms of your credit card agreement. So, same thing. We already looked at it. And then here's here's another one. Bang, bang, bang. It's the obviously it's the exact same uh paper, right? So there it is. Bang, bang, bang. So it's real, it's amazing, it's awesome. Thank you, Bidium. Bah! All right, so that's everybody. Oh, what's we got here? Evidence of India growth. Weekly local Bitcoins volume. Oh, in the Indian rupee. Bang. Okay. Well, actually it looks kind of like a decline right there. <laughs> it looks like it banged and then <laughs> so anyways binium though i see what you're saying though it was way down here we're up here and plus anyways i know i know i'm just fucking with you the truth is uh we know that the uh the supreme court of india overturned the central bank of india's bullshit ban on crypto and so it's going to take time for more rupees to come in. So I'm just I'm just busting your balls. Yeah, that's great. That's great, man. More rupees, baby. That's what we want. Rupees. All of them. <laughs> rupees, that's the Indian money, by the way. Uh, for those who don't know. All right, that's everybody. And we did that already. All right, good. Bye. Let's get back to bye. Yeah. So. All right, so bang. Welcome back to the Death Star. We had a great show for you today. All right. So. Uh, who the fuck is blowing up my phone? Someone is calling me. I can hear my phone ringing. This is the third time in a row. I bet you it's my mom. She does that. She'll call me and it's like, Ah, uh, Shamari doesn't answer. I'll call him right back. It's like, look, mom, I can see you're calling. Obviously, I don't feel like talking right now. I mean, I don't say that to her, of course, but... <laughs> you know, you know, I usually just will say like, Oh, sleeping mom. Sorry, you know my trading schedule. <laughs> I can get away with it. All right, anyways, though, look, we had a great show for you today. <laughs> Chainlink to the rescue. So, Chainlink is going to power a non-fungible token blockchain games. Um, well, they're going to they're gonna, uh, provide that randomness and also data to the game. So, we didn't really talk about the data part so much, right? There was just one little line in the story about that part. Um but whatever, it looks like the uh, randomness seems to be the most important thing. And, uh, you know, randomness is important. I've explained to you, you know, when I was a kid, I used to program computers. And, you know, a, a computer doesn't do random, right? You can't tell a computer to be random. <laughs> you have to tell it exactly what to do, right? Um, 
And so to get randomness in your software is huge. When I was a kid, I used to program in what's called a, a programming language called C++. And I used to program in another one called C Sharp. And we used to have whole libraries of functions. These are, these are these little snippets of code you put into your program just for randomness. Like if you needed some sort of random thing, yeah, you'd put that line of code in, bang, just for random. That's how important uh, randomness is and how hard it is because a computer only does exactly what you tell it. It can't think. It can't random, right? And so... Uh, it's a big deal. I know it sounds stupid to you. I, I mean, if you're not really into computer programming or something, you probably are just like, all right, buddy, settle down. But that's yeah, a big deal. Uh, like the example in the in the in the Chainlink story, right? Yeah. Well, how do I know that that lottery winner really won that lottery? Yeah. How do I know? I didn't. You know, it wasn't a sixty-five million dollar lottery, and and homeboy just got his niece to win it. All right, niece. Here's your college fund. We'll have all these suckers buy these tickets and I'll give you the money for a college fund, right? Got to prove it. And so the randomness is amazing. But what's also amazing about the chain link thing is that everyone can see that it's random, right? Isn't that, that was one of the things it said provable. <clears throat> so I guess, I mean, I don't know how you're seeing it. I guess you go on the blockchain and look somehow somewhere and they're going to be able to prove that whatever, whatever was random. All right, fine. So. Chainlink to the rescue, another onboarding. Bang, Chainlink hodlers, be happy. And then Bank of America is going to treat Ethereum and Bitcoin like cash. So, I mean, look, uh, it, it, this is not an endorsement of Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrency, or anything. Bank of America is not stupid. They're there to create wealth for their shareholders. And, well, if I can make a few bucks out of these crypto nerds, well, I will. So... That's all that is, but but it's not just that all that is, but it's the fact that it's such a big enough thing now that Bank of America is like, all right, it's worth servicing these people. Do you see what I'm saying? Like before they were like, all right, who gives a fuck about those little green haired nose ring little fuck sticks? Yeah, but now it's getting real, right? Now shit's getting real. Uh uh, You know, it's getting talked about in Congress here. They're not stupid. Uh, They know what's coming. Um, so, uh, you know, you'll like how, what this channel is about is market positioning, right? You guys know, and I've said it before, but if you're new, what this whole channel is about is to make you buy a big old cryptocurrency warehouse, bang, build a fat one, bang, with working product, with revenue generating product, because there is a tsunami of money that's on the way. So what this channel is about is market positioning. In other words, we know of an event that's going to occur. I'm not going to get into the Noah story. Don't worry. But but like Noah, we know an event that's going to occur and we are taking action now. We know that there's institutional money that's going to come to this space as soon as there's regulations, right? Duh. Um, they're going to be investing in this space, of course. Your V-chains, your IOTAs, your chain links, singularity nets. So, you know, that's what this channel is about, to position you so that you're buying and buying and buying all this good quality stuff now. So when these guys get here, all right, well, you've got a fucking full ass, full ass warehouse to sell them. Right? That's why I keep telling you to accumulate, 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 so that when we finally get the regulations and proper stuff we need, well, <laughs> you're just sitting here waiting just to collect your fucking money. You know, I mean, that's really, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much taking candy from a baby. We know they're coming. We know they're going to buy working product. So we're buying the working product first. And then when they get here, all right, well, we're going to sell it to them at a daggone premium. Wow. Oh, a real good premium. <laughs> yes. A real good premium indeed. And so um, why did I get into all that? Oh, the positioning. And so that's what Bank of America is doing. Well, Bank of America is not stupid. They know that these hedge fund boys, once they're regulated, are going to come to the space. Right? I mean... I know that. I mean, give me a fucking break. I mean, everybody, if you're a market guy, you fucking know that. And so they're just getting all their ducks in order, getting everything in line so that when the regulations come and all the, the floodgates are open, well, they're positioned to capitalize on it, right? And now as far as Ethereum and Bitcoin go, well, Bitcoin and Ethereum are legal here in America already. They're, they're already regulated under the CFTC. Uh, that's the community... 
the Futures Trading Commission, and um, there are already commodities here in America. And so, all right, well, we can, if we can make our money off of these crypto people now, you know, well, why wait? <laughs> that's to make off. That's make some money off these kids. Well, not kids, people. Uh, and so, yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, yeah, that's what I like about the story is that it shows that crypto is actually, you know, worth Bank of America actually doing something to make money off this place now, right? So, all right, bang. And then finally, 21 shares launches a Bitcoin ETP on Bourse, etc. Bang. And so, uh, we were reading about, so 21 shares. I told you it was that company called Amon AG that we were reading about last year. Um, I think they came out with like five or six ETPs, didn't they? And um, they switched their name to 21 shares. So it's the same company. Um, 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 can I get another? Um, okay, hold on. I'm trying to think of what to tell you. And so um, uh, they kept putting their... They listed, they listed a lot of their stuff on six. That's the Swiss stock exchange. But as you can see, now they're listing this on with the Germans. Oh, yeah. They're teaming up with them dang on Germans, boys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can see they're expanding out. And so by being in, in Germany, um, you have access to the whole European market, right? Uh, since it's part of the European Union, right? And so any European hedge fund, whatever, can now, uh, well, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, um, start investing in this ETP. Um, it seemed very, hold on, let me just take a quick look at something. I just want to see if, uh, was it only institutions or, let me just see, or, 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 or is it for regular people too? Just let me take a quick peek, guys, hold on. institutional grade right that's institutional grade but it doesn't mean that individuals can't buy it so hold on let me just look one second guys <clears throat> anyways i don't yeah it doesn't say right it, 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 all right all right anyway look 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 all right all right let's just i don't want to bore you guys like that I'm sitting here staring at something anyways though but um well, I know institutions can get it, and that's what really matters. That's the money we need. And so, um, <laughs> yes, that's the money we really should care about. Um, but like I said, I mean, I don't know how it is in Europe, but like I said, <clears throat> like I've always said here, like here in America, you know, ETFs, soccer mom and dad, yeah, they buy ETFs all the time, all the time on their E-Trade accounts, all the time. It's one of the features of E-Trade, like, Yes, buy your ETF from us. Like, you know, it's like an, even an advertised thing. And so I don't know how how, how Europeans are. Um, you know, so if you're a European, uh, are you guys buying ET, ETPs over there? Is that a thing or, or what for you individual investors? Like here in America, individual investors buy ETFs. Like I said, on their, their like uh, TD Ameritrade accounts or their Charles Schwab accounts. Yeah, like they come home after work and buy some all the time all the time and so i was wondering i want to know what <clears throat> if if that's a big thing in europe or what but anyways um this takes these are physically settled sorry sorry that's not settled it's not a futures contract my bad it's an etp it's physically held bitcoins in this fucking etp which means that that takes the money uh, takes the bitcoins off the market uh gives us scarcity uh thus Technically, it should drive up price. Hold on a second. And so, uh, you know, and the other thing about this contract, it's a regulated contract, right? So institutions will have no problem. And like I said, well, like the story told us actually is... Um, Well, and like I told you guys earlier, yeah, this thing, it's the same as being listed on the NASDAQ, kind of, etc. is the, um, 
It's a German sort of NASDAQ. It's like electronic trading or something like that. I'm not an etc. master, so I don't know. So anyways, this is good for us, good for crypto, and good for the multiverse. So on that note, let's chill it and kill it to get you back to your wives and lives. So subscribe below, press the subscribe button down here, and press that little bell. And every time I put up some new content, um, you'll be notified. And if you feel like watching, well, yes, there it is. So look, subscribe below, press the bell. You get an automatic, an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. Bye! In the multiverse. Yes. Look, look, my name's Shamar Clark. I love talking money. Bye! Love talking crypto. Look, look. Love making it too. It's a favorite time of my day. And so, thank you for having me in your home earlier than yesterday. <laughs> Sorry about missing out yesterday, guys. That's why I'm doing it early today. I kind of feel guilty. I was like, fuck. I did it so late yesterday. I gotta, I gotta make up for it by doing one early today. And so... Look, you know I love you guys, and so thank you for having me in your home, and I will see you uh, tomorrow uh, with some more of the greatest in the multiverse. And so until then, subscribe below, press the bell, watch this video here. Bye, and I'll see you all tomorrow. My name is Shamari Clark. Love you guys. Have a great night, and bye. Always remember, Shamari's always on duty. Yes, Buckstick. Over and out.